Hi, this is Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today I'm going to kind of deviate from jewelry and watches and I'm going to go into 3D printing with Blender and how to take a character model that you can download off the internet for free and pose it in any way you want and then print it as a posed character however you want to use it. Before we get started with the next part of our video and our tutorial, I just want to talk to you a little bit about Blender Gems. Some of you guys know about Blender Gems, some of you don't. Blender Gems is a library of a couple hundred models that I've done in Blender that you can use with any 3D program. All of these models are tested with 3D printing and have all been remeshed to work as like Lego blocks where you can pull in certain designs, create your own models, modify them in any way you want, and then print them in 3D or use them for jewelry designs. This helps support my channel, guys, and if you want to purchase it, it is $50. You can get it available at myjewelrybench.com, uh, or if you are a Patreon supporter at Tier 2, which is a $5 per month level, you get all of these models, any updates, as well as other models that I do um, for free at that support level. Again, all this goes to help my channel, and I appreciate all the support I get. Let's get started on the tutorial. Got my internet browser up and running and what I did was I decided to go to uh, do a search on Bing or you can do it on Google and I did a free 3D characters search and a couple of things come up and what I found that works for me is I went to uh, free characters on Turbo Squid so I'm going to click this link here and this brings up a bunch of characters of course some of these are free some of these are paid you can see how much it's going to cost if you wanted to purchase and download this um, to uh, just I, I want to get a robot character, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here where it says characters, and I'm also going to type in robots, or robot, and I'm going to do a search there. And now we can see we have some robots that we can download, some for free, some that we'll have to pay for. Uh, I'm going to look for a free robot. At first I downloaded this one, but this one has some mesh errors in it, and it caused a little problem, so I'm going to leave that one alone. And I'm going to keep looking for a model that is symmetric, which means that it is just a stand-up character with left and right arms out in the same place. And this one seems to be pretty popular, so I'm going to click on this link here, and you can see here is a picture of our model and how it looks, how it's rigged. I'm going to go ahead and hit the download option for this, and this will bring in a download panel. You'll need a, an account for Turbo Squid, it's free. You can go in there, set up an email and a password, and you can log in anytime you want. Um, here you're given the options for how you want to download this. I am going to hit the little plus sign here, and I am going to select uh, typhoon.obj for this particular typhoon character, and that should download that particular file. Now where do I want to put it? I'm going to put this into a new folder um, in my character folders, and I'm going to call this typhoon and then we will save that file there. With that file saved, and we can tell it's saved because our browser tells us it is, I will close up my internet browser, and now I will get rid of my box in Blender, and we have a blank Blender screen. So what I want to do next is import that OBJ file, but first, before we go ahead and import that file, there's one thing that we need to make sure that is activated in your version of Blender. So in Blender 2.82, 2.83, whatever version you're using, um, go to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences, and I'm going to move this in the middle of the screen here. So if we look carefully, we can see we've got Add-on selected, and what we're going to do is search for a specific add-on, and this add-on is called Rigify. And we can go over to the little magnifying glass here and type in RIG, and that will bring in anything that's labeled with RIG, for instance, Rigify. If you do not have a check mark in the little box, please put one there, and that activates Rigify. If you want more information on this add on from Blender, you can hit the Documentations button, um, and that will take you to the Documentations uh, page for this particular add on. I'm going to leave it at that. We'll just let that go. And I'm going to close this up now that it's saved. Next thing we have to do is import our model. We saved it as an OBJ file or a wavefront model. So I'm going to come over to File, Import, Wavefront. And then we will go look for our model. Now I put that in a folder called Robot, I believe. And there it is, Typhoon. And there is our Typhoon object. So I'm going to select that and import it. So there is our robot model. It is fairly basic. 
going to rotate this along the x-axis, Rx90, so that we have it standing straight up. I'm going to look at this from the front view. We're just going to make that so that it's right about here. Um, that way it looks like the feet are just about on the x-axis. That's pretty good, just like so. Now this particular model doesn't have a lot of detail to it, but you can go get more detailed models uh, of your liking. With this selected, I am going to press Control A and we will align to rotation and scale. I'm actually going to do all transformations. And now we have a model that's centered uh, with their feet on the 3D cursor in the middle of the grid. <clears throat> Once that's done, the next step we have to do that we have the Rigify uh, option added is we need to add a basic rig to this particular model. Now this is a low poly model and um, it's probably not the prettiest to use and you can go, like I said, get any model you want, but rigging is rigging for any model that you use that is in human form or human shape. So for instance, with this model selected, I'll just click off of it. And what I want to do now is hit Shift A, come down to Armature, and we're going to add in a basic human rig. So you have a single bone, a human rig, which would have ears, fingers, and all kinds of things. We're, we're going to skip that because it's very detailed. I'm going to come down to Basic, and I am going to select Basic Human Meta Rig. And there is our basic human meta rig. And now I need to size that equal to the size of our mesh. So with the rig selected, I'll hit S and then I will drag that mouse over until our rig equals the size along the Z axis of our mesh. Looks pretty good. I'm just gonna move that forward just a little bit, just like so. I'm pretty happy with that. Well, of course, you can see now our rig is kind of inside our mesh model of our robot. And what I want to do now is show you how to view the rig over the mesh model. So with the rig selected, and you can tell it's selected because the rig is in yellow. Come over to this little tab here in the properties tab with this little running person. That is our rig tool. And we come over to the properties. We're going to look at the viewport display options. So expand that. Once you've expanded that, you'll see this option here in front. And if I click that or put a check mark here in this box, our rig will show itself in front of our mesh. And now we can see our rig from no matter which angle we look at. Once you have your rig set up, the next step is to align the rig so that the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the legs and feet are matching your mesh. So. I'm going to look at this from a front view, so we're looking straight on by pressing the one key on our numeric keypad or use the tilde key and select front. So if I hit the tilde key, I can come over here to front, and now we're looking at it straight on. I can take my rig, and I'm going to select my rig here, and I'm going to go into edit mode because what we want to do is edit our rig's position. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And now you can see I can grab certain joints. Now if I grab this joint and I move it up and down, you can see it only moves one arm. And I'm going to cancel that. And what I want to do is whatever change I make on one side of the rig, I want to make on the opposite side. So our character is symmetric. So we might as well use our rig in symmetry mode. To do this in edit mode, um, we're going to come over here to the upper right corner of our 3D viewport. And you'll see there's a little butterfly and one side is gray, one side is dark. And that's the symmetry icon. Right next to that it says X. So I will hit the X key. And what I can do with this now is grab this particular joint. And I can press the G key and move that joint to the elbow. Since this would be the elbow. This here is the wrist. And if I grab that, press the G key and then move that here. I can move it to the wrist. And then I'll grab the end of the finger bone and I will move that to the end of the finger on the robot. So now you can see on both the left and right side we match. Our shoulders are in pretty good place but I think I want to move our shoulders up a little bit so I'm going to just kind of move that over and uh, we'll grab that one just about like so. That looks pretty good. Okay, now these two bones here are breast bones. They work particularly well for female characters. Um, we don't necessarily need them for a robot, but I'm going to leave those in place anyway. So we'll just leave those there. Looking at this from the front view again, I am going to adjust the pivot point for my hip joint. So G, and I'm going to put that right about here. 
I'm going to zoom into the legs. This is our knee joint, so I want our knee to be over here. I'm just going to move that there. Again, what I do is I grab the joint and I, let's see, I'm going to grab all of these bones, press the G key to move them as a group. I'm going to put those right about here. That looks good. And then I'll take our ankle and we'll move that up a little bit. So far, so good. I think that works well. Now we also have to do this from a side perspective because the side perspective is going to be equally important. And you can see, I'm going to look at this from the top view. If I zoom into the arm, you can see the elbow is way too close to the back of the arm. So I'm going to hit the G key and I'm going to move that in right about here. And it looks like the rest of our armature is fine. And let's take a look at our legs from the side view. Our knee looks pretty good. I think I want the knee to be a little bit more here. So just to kind of touch that up a little bit like so. And let's grab this head bone and move that over to about the middle of the head. Our knee looks good. Our ankle looks a little off. So I'm going to put the ankle right about here. This is our heel bone. So I'm going to grab that whole bone if I can. Control Z. Let's grab this whole bone. Control Z. All right, like that. Three. G. Let's put that right at the heel. That looks pretty good. Here's our toe bone. So I'm going to move that over just a little bit. And I'm going to give this a little bit more of an arch. I kind of like the way that looks. <clears throat> that is our character rig and it looks like I've got the entire character rigged pretty well. Um, I could make a little more, uh, I could make some more changes to this and that works pretty pretty good for me. I do want to just go back into object mode and I do want to show you the difference. This is a basic rig so you can see on a basic rig we have very little control. We can we can control the whole hand as a whole, but not as a uh, with individual fingers. If our character had fingers, I would suggest using a different rig, and I'm going to import that rig right now. So I'm not going to use it, but I'll import it and show it to you. Shift A, and let's select a new rig. So we'll come down to Armature, and we're going to do a human meta rig. I'm going to move this over here, and I'm going to size this up. And here you can see, I'm going to show you the highlights. We have finger bones on the left and right hands. And we have facial feature bones. So we, hit, we can control the eye movement, the eyelid, the eyebrows, ears, mouth, and nose. Each of those has a corresponding bone associated with it, which allows you to get much more detail into your character. Now, since I'm not going to use that, we'll just get rid of it and go back to our current mesh. So with our mesh selected and actually with our rig all set and our mesh is ready to be parented to the rig, how we do that is we're going to press the mesh so that it is highlighted and that is our robot character. While holding the shift key down, we're going to select any one of the bones in our armature rig or our character rig. So both of those are selected. Your character should be in orange and your rig should be in yellow. Now that that's done, we want to parent the two together and this is a little bit different than other parenting types but it works very similar so we're going to hit control P to get to the parenting panel that brings up our parent panel and what we want to do is select uh, the armature deform but we want to do automatic weights what weights are guys those are the amount of influence that every joint in our skeleton rig will have along with our mesh. You can go and adjust those. I will get into weight weight systems in rigging in a later video, but there are tons of videos to go look at. So if you wanted to uh, play with those figures, you could. For now, we're going to stick with automatic weights. So just select that. And now our rig has been parented to our mesh with automatic weighting. And now we can go and pose our character. So now that we have the parenting process done, now it's time to pose our character. So how do we pose our character? It's not that simple. To, we can't just grab a bone and just move it anywhere we want because if we do, it just moves our whole character. So how we do this is we go into pose mode. So basically what we want to do is come up here to where it says object mode. And if you hit the little down arrow, 
you can see now we have a pose mode. So if I grab that and I click on that, this allows me to start posing our character in any way I want. So for instance, if I take the head bone here and I decided I want to rotate the robot's head left or right, I can just hit the RZ key to rotate this left or right and you can see it rotates our character's head left and right. Now this particular mesh is not really good because it has no neck so we get some deformation in our mesh. For instance, I'll zoom in here and you can see we're kind of deformed along the chin line of our mesh, but you get the idea you can control the angle of the head. So let's say I want to take this and I want to rotate this arm so that it's down. So I select this arm bone and hit RY and now I can take the entire arm and rotate that down just like so. And if I want to take this and rotate this along the x-axis and have the forearm come up, I can hit RX and then bring the forearm up and then RZ and bring it forward. And I can also work with the hand here. For instance, if I want to rotate this hand, RZ, I can do it like so. If I want to rotate it along the y-axis, RY, I can turn the palm up or turn the palm down. Pretty slick how you can do this. And I'm going to RZ this and just bring that in like so. I take the forearm, RZ, I'm going to bring that in a little more and you'll see why in a little bit. So now you can see I've got our arm kind of molded in a certain way and posed in a certain way. And now I want to grab this arm, RZ, I'm going to bring that forward. I'm going to bring it uh, RY, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. RZ, I'm going to bring that up, RX. And then I am going to twist this hand, RY. And I'm going to go into local mode, RY. And I'm going to turn the palm up just like so. And there's a reason I want to do that. And I'm going to show you in just a minute. So I'm going to pose this a little more. And I'm going to take my leg and then RX. Rx, 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 so I kind of got that like it's in a stance or a walking position. And you can just rotate these. You can rotate them along the global or local, however you want to do that. And so far, so good. And now I want to create a weapon for this. So I'm just going to grab in a, uh, let's just come over here. Let's go back into object mode. And forgive me, guys, I'm going to just speed through this. I'm going to design a shield for the arm and a weapon. Okay, so what I've done now is I've actually modeled my character in a certain way where I've given them a shield and a weapon. I know that's pretty crude, but that's that looks pretty good. And then if I come over here and go back to pose mode now, the cool thing is now that I've got this all done, I can come over here and turn off my rig view. So if I come over to my rig and I turn off front view under properties, now you can see there is our mesh character. Our rig is still kind of in view, but it's not as visible. But now I can take this whole group and I can export this as a mesh and then uh, 3D print it. So for instance, with this pose the way it is, if I want to, uh, well, let's just do something else here. Let's say you want to give this a stand. I'm going to come over and I'm going to add in a cylinder I'm going to hit SZ and make that real small. S Shift Z, I'm going to make that wider so that our character is standing on that. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit, just like so. 
So our robot is walking on the stand. The stand gives us a nice flat base. And what I could do now is select all of these objects, come over to File, Export as a Wavefront, and I'm going to hit Selected Objects Only. We're going to call this, I'm going to save this on my desktop, um, Fighting Robot. And we're exporting just the selected items as an OBJ file. I will do that. And now the really cool thing is if I bring up sheet 2 box so I'm going to grab that OBJ file and we're going to open and we're going to grab fightingrobot.obj. I'm going to hit open and there it is. We're going to rotate that along the, uh, let's see, you want to rotate that plus and then I want to size that because I did not do a good job sizing that. So let's bring this up to how about here? That looks pretty good. And now I've got this low poly robot that I can 3D print on my Elegoo Mars. And it's that simple. So here's your robot and it's ready to be printed. And you can see we've got the details that were in the basic robot that uh, we didn't, didn't, uh, we don't have to worry. And you can see we've got the details in the robot so that when we print this it'll have its weapon, its shield, and we can go back and then do, just do whatever we want here to add in supports. So if we want to add in all supports, just come over to add and it is ready for 3D printing. It's that simple guys. You can go back to Blender and you can pose this into another shape and uh, move, the, move the shield and the weapon around to get to the point where you like. And you'll have this character in multiple forms and different styles. And that's how you can go and 3D print any posed rig once you've downloaded the file and applied that rig to your character mesh. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of these or something a little bit different, please leave a comment in the description below because the comments uh, are also tools where you can give me some advice as to what I can do for you guys, and I appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. All of the new subscribers I get, I really do appreciate, and every one of you has helped grow my channel. Now over 3,000 subscribers that uh, I just can't tell you enough how much I, I enjoy working with you guys. Thanks for watching and have a great day, guys.